Now, the DA's Mbali Nduli has officially entered the party's leadership race. She says she's running for several reasons, including to clear the confusion of the identity of the party and to ensure that local leaders of the party are also part of the decision-making process. Now, for more on her reasons, I'm joined in the studio by Mbali Nduli herself. Good afternoon, Mbali. Good afternoon, Tammy. Thank you for having me. You've had quite a busy morning. <laughs> I have. It's so, been really great. Have, uh, how has it been for you? The response has been really amazing. Um, and I mean, even from Tuesday when I sent out the letter, I've been getting so much encouragement from people in the party. Um, and that's why I think that they really, um, or that letter really accurately captured the mood of where we were. Um, and then obviously the public is very funny, so <laughs> that's been really interesting the to watch. The public them. is funny in what way? You know, they'll tease you about, oh, why are you running? So there's been some really interesting comments, but a lot of them have been really encouraging. And what's been really nice to see is people saying, I wasn't going to renew my membership or I hadn't voted for the DA, but now I'm excited again. And that's exactly what um, I'd like to do with this campaign is to get people who either stayed away from us or have never considered us their political home to maybe look at us differently. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit later on, but I know John Moody, um, you know, when he announced that he was going to, to raise his hand as well, said he sat down and spoke to his family, got their reactions and got their support. Have you done the same too? How has been the reaction from your family? Um, it's been really amazing. I obviously had to do that because I've just had a, a baby girl who's 11 months. Congratulations. Um, and so it wasn't an easy decision to come to because I'm also very cognizant of the fact that I want to be a very present mother. But um, I think we need to make sure that there's a country for her to grow up in. Um, so for me, the crisis that we find ourselves in is one that I think um, we need to solve. And I think that she'll be proud one day if she looks back and I was successful. So you're doing this for your daughter? I'm doing it for my daughter. I'm doing it for the ordinary person in the DA who, like me, really believes that the party can do better than where we are right now. Um, and I'm doing it to just inspire South Africans again because I think we're all tired of the politics that we're seeing. The politicians who are leaders right now, a lot of them are actually part of the problem. So I don't think many of them can be part of the solution. Um, and I think if we continue the way that we are, if we don't have a new way of doing politics, people are going to check out of the system. And when that happens, you actually start to have people who will capitalize on that and make people rise up out of fear and anger, and that's going to polarize our country. You've been very clear about the reasons why you've decided to run for the leadership of the Democratic Alliance. You've been very clear about your patriotism and how you want South Africa to work. Mm -hmm. But the big question is, is the Democratic Alliance the vehicle with which to do that? I've, I really believe that it is. And I think that we haven't done a good enough job in the Democratic Alliance of showing the different types of people that there are. And one of the things that I would do as leader would be to bring a lot of those local leaders, those local personalities to the forefront. Because at the moment, we have a small grouping of leaders, one or two of them, who will say what they want, do what they want, and then people think that that's the whole DA. The DA has got so many good people on the ground who really work hard and are really trying to make this country a better place. And I want to be the leader that shows that side of the DA um, because then I think that people would actually give us a chance and they'd believe that we could look at some of the realities that this country is facing. But um, is leadership in Bali not a reflection of who and what the DA really is about. Even today during your, your press briefing, you said it's not just those who are on Twitter. That is not the face of the DA. That's mm -hmm. not really who is there. And you were referring there, um, I assume, to, to Helen Ziller, who's very active on Twitter. Amongst others. Amongst others. Mm -hmm. You also made a reference to, to uh, Roger Burrows mm -hmm. and the, the influence that he had on you. And he made you want to join politics and he gave you a side of the DA that you believe exists. Mm. But if South Africans have not seen the Roger um, Burrow side, mm. but have been subjected to the, the, the Helen Zillers and whoever else you're talking about on, on Twitter, is that not then the reality that they are more of the, the Twitters than the Roger Burrows? Not at all. And that's why I'm running, to show that there are different people in the DA and that there's a lot of people who are in the majority that just want to make the party work to just make South Africa work. And nobody's going to see that if nobody's going to run and show that that's the vision that they have for the party. So I think that we've really um, gotten into a state where we haven't involved the broader membership of our party in some of the key decisions. And that's why it's been looking like we're tearing each other apart, because 
we can't find common ground. So the policy conference is going to be very important for that. And as the leader, I'm going to try and contribute to that by saying that whatever policies we come out of, they must be to South African realities. They must have a way that we can implement them and start doing them because I'm young, but I can't have another 25 years of waiting for policy to take place that actually address the issues that we have in our country. Um, and they must be kind and fair. And that's not the current thing that we have in the DA. And so right now, some people can speak, some people can't speak. Um, and because of that, we just can't find common ground. And I want us to go in a different direction. I want us to go in a way that actually leads with empathy and kindness. And I think if we can do that, we'll convince South Africans to look at us too. There seem to be very clear divisions within the Democratic Alliance. You said that this cannot be a two leadership party where just the two leaders are the ones that get to have a say. Who are the two leaders that you're talking about? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter who the leaders are, but I but think... But who are the ones that you were making reference to? So I think to. in reference to that particular question, it was in reference to uh, the interim leader, John Steenhuisen, who was quoted in an article saying that race is not a proxy for disadvantage. Now, I don't think that it's for John or Helen or Mbali to decide that when it is one of the most contentious issues on the table in the Democratic Alliance. It has to be something that we take so that the broader members in the party can have some say into whether we believe that yes or no, if we're saying that it's just poverty, what does that look like? Is it somebody walking five kilometers to school? Is it somebody who's got no electricity at home? We need to grapple with these issues so that we're not talking wishy-washy to South Africans because no one's going to believe us. So I don't think that it's wise right now for leaders to say that because then obviously if people have different uh, ideas in the party, then start to clash because who gets to say what the policy is if we all haven't decided it? But is this not key to the issue of identity? specifically considering that we are in South Africa, considering that we come from an apartheid past, mm. uh, and the problems that we're facing now are problems that have been caused by race-based uh, policies. Mm. So are race-based solutions not then the panacea? So this is exactly what I'm saying. Is I have my uh, own views on this, and I think that poverty in this country does have a color, but I think increasingly... We are also seeing, because of the lack of economic growth in this country, people who may not have been excluded previously, but feeling insecure. And you need to acknowledge that too. And that's because people don't know that they are going to have jobs. There's retrenchments happening all the time. And so the DA must grapple with that, and we must talk about what that looks like. And I don't believe that there are people in South Africa, the ordinary South African person, that doesn't see where the poverty is in this country. But we also can't neglect or... Um, scapegoat people and say that we're not going to look at the issues too because we're all scared and that's the situation that we're in. We have a huge economic crisis but if we don't have the political leadership that's going to speak to, with empathy to all of these groups of people then I don't think that we're going to go anywhere and the DA needs to do that. We need to have a different way because right now there's two options in front of us. We can stabilize and stay in the status quo and hope that it's going to be okay or we can be courageous and bold and really tackle these issues with courage um, and empathy and try and forge a new way going forward. And talking about these two camps is quite clear. There's the John Stenhazen, the Zilla, uh, white conservatism moving closer to the right. And then it seems like there is the black caucus, those two divisions. Is, that, is, it, a, is it that clear for you that you are actually going to be going against John Stenhazen and the Zillas, pro the black caucus within the Democratic Alliance? So first, the term of the Black Caucus is something that was made by the media. There is no actual Black Caucus. But I think it's important also to say that I don't think any of the leaders in the party don't think that they're doing the right thing. I think there's a difference of where we think that this is happening. So me saying that I don't think the current leadership is taking us in the right direction is not to attack them. I think maybe they think that that's what the party needs. I'm saying a different thing. And and, and is that, though, not the real reason here? The big question is there are not only personality differences, but ideological differences. And can those ideological differences coexist in one space? Once again, is the DA the correct vehicle for you to lead and create the South Africa that you want to create for you, your children, and the next generation? So I don't know that there's ideological differences because we haven't discussed them. This is why we have this issue. We haven't had a policy conference for years, and that's why we don't know where we stand on things. You might find that many people will agree with me and some people will agree with John. It's just not clear in the party, and that's why I'm saying that we need to once and for all decide who we are and what we want to fight for. 
But my uh, interpretation of the DA, the people that I know and the people on the ground, is that they are very willing to follow a path that is going to unite South Africans and is going to speak to the realities. Um, so I think that that's what's going to emerge victorious at both the Congress and the policy conference. But we must have these debates and we mustn't be scared about it and we mustn't be acrimonious. Um, and us differing on opinion, um, I don't think is a, around racial lines at all. I think it's about a lot of different things, including also the generational gaps that there are in the party. I think young people are really agitating for us to move and to see things that we can go out to people and say, we're going to do this now, um, because just, I think we're going to run out of patience soon. In your DA that you would like mm -hmm. to lead, who will you be targeting? Are you going for the black majority or are you going to regain the, the whites who have gone to the Freedom Front Plus? I think we have to go for everyone. And can, I think can you, though, go for everyone within this one body? You might not win everyone, but I firmly believe that you need to try and have a message that speaks to as many South Africans around the kind of South Africa that we want. And if people don't vote for you, that's okay, too. I'm not convinced that people in our party or people that we are voters automatically went to the Freedom Front Plus. There's nothing that actually supports that. They could have just stayed at home, which is what I really think that they did. Except and that in the, the places ones, where you did lose, it was to the Freedom Front. In some places, but again, it's not like there's a group of people that are static and that if they are voting here, then they vote. You have people that might have come out, might not have come out. And so we mustn't also fall into the fallacy in the DA of thinking that we're losing to another party. It may very well be the case, and it probably is to some extent, but we actually need to look at the people who voted for us and just then felt, I'm just checking out of the system. That's the trouble. Those are the people that we need to get back because they didn't leave us for another party. They just stayed home because they believed that they didn't have a political home at all. And I'm saying if we show them a new way, if we are inspiring and are creative and bold with the decisions that we take, we'll reinvigorate them as well as other people. Your thoughts on uh, Musi Maimane? I mean, you said that a party is needed, a new party, which is the revamped DA, a new oh, DA, okay. a new DA is, is needed. Mm -hmm. In his uh, address to the, 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 the press um, a couple of days ago, it might have been yesterday, Musi Maimane was saying that politics and political parties are actually not the way to go anymore uh, because they've shown that they cannot create change in our societies. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't think that's true. Um, I think that we've seen a lot of changes come from political parties. We're in a very different place to where we were in 94, and I mean, credit must be given to that, both to the governing uh, party, but also to the DA, where it's governed. So there's definitely been material changes in people's lives, and I think for now, political parties are the way. But what I would agree with is we need to look at changing uh, part of our electoral system, and I think that we need to have a lot more direct election so that power is back in the citizens' hands, because right now, parties are far too powerful in the way that um, they are able to recall mayors or do a whole bunch of things to list. And I think that it's not a real or the best form of democracy that we could have. And I, and I would hope that my party at the policy conference will deal with that particular issue. I personally would like to vote for a mayor that I think is the right person, regardless of their party. We're going to go for a quick break, but if you could just stay with us, just one or two more questions sure. just after this. We've got Ambali Ndolo, who's lifted up her hands and says that she wants to be the next leader of the Democratic Alliance. We'll continue our conversation with her just after this break.
Thank you for staying with us. We are in conversation with the DA Zimbali Nduli, who's officially entered the party's leadership race. Now, we were talking before this break, but really quickly, your thoughts on Helen Ziller uh, coming back as federal chair? Uh, I think it was an interesting move. Unprecedented to have a former leader of the party retire and then come back to what is essentially the second position. Um, but, I mean, she won in a democratic contest, and so that's uh, what happened. You've chosen three words to describe the type of leadership that you want to see for the DA. You want a DA that's kind, that's strong, that's fair. Mm -hmm. The inference then is that at the moment the DA is unkind, at the moment the DA is weak, at the moment the DA is unfair. In what ways is the DA all these three things? So I don't think that the DA is unkind, but I think that we could lead with that as a value that is at the center of the things that we do and talk about a lot more. And I don't think that we are as strong as we used to be, and we need to show that by winning again and getting South Africans back. And I think that there have been internal disciplinary processes, particularly that we have uh, embarked upon, that have not been fair to all involved. And I really think that once you start doing that, you create uh, a culture that's toxic within the organization where people are afraid to speak up um, out of fear of reprisals and feel that others are more equal than them. So I think that these are not things that uh, don't exist, but we definitely could do it better. And I think that those are the characteristics that we need to lead with a lot more um, going forward. Do you think you actually stand a chance? Of course. Um, I think that the positivity that has come from my letter initially on Tuesday, as well as the people who have come out in support and have said that they'll go to their branches, they'll be delegates, they'll support my campaign in any way, I think really shows that this is anyone's race for the taking. John Stevenson has been going around the country doing his State of, of the Nation tour. Some would look at it like as, as an election campaign of sorts. Some actually have said that it's actually between you and, and him, that John is actually your real uh, competitor. Do you think you stand a chance against him? I'm his real competitor. Uh, he's the incumbent, and I think that I'm the one who has nothing to lose here. Thank you so much, Mbali. <laughs> Thank you. That's Mbali Nduli, who is going to be running for the leader of the Democratic Alliance. Thank you so much for your time once again.